Hello friends and welcome to this crochet tutorial where I will show you how to make this bunny pillow either as a plushie or as worsted weight yarn. In this tutorial I'll show you how to add safety eyes, embroider the nose, and how to sew on an applique piece. We have lots of stuffing that will be used in this plushie and just a little in this one but the whole video is focused on this size you use a different size hook for a different size yarn and you will get a different size bunny pillow so come join me and let's make this bunny pillow together let's begin the materials and the tools that we're going to be using to make this bunny pillow. We have Bernat Blanket. We're going to be using it in white and the body is in pink. To do the nose, we're going to have, um, it's kind of a purplish pink color. You won't need a whole lot. This is just for the video. We have some black yarn which would be for the whiskers. We have a stitch marker and an 8 millimeter crochet hook. Now I'd like to show you these crochet hooks. I had them lasered with my name and my logo on it and I'd like to show you where I found them I got them here on Etsy at M and M Laser Works. I think you'll really be happy if you had yours lasered by them as well. So let's get started. We will also need polyfill or any kind of stuffing that you can use for um, pillows or dolls to stuff our bunny pillow with. The eyes that we're using is 30 millimeter. You want them to cover at least two rows of stitching and these also have a safety backing. We're also using a large eye tapestry needle for sewing and uh, placing the nose and the whiskers on with too. This is what our bunny will look like if you use acrylic yarn. Um, I used a 4.5 millimeter hook and a size 5 chunky yarn. It's about mm, 6 inches tall I guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to be starting here on the bottom and then we're going to be working up to the sides and we'll finish up here at the top. We'll then create our separate ears, sew them onto the top, as well as add our eyes as we go along and finish up with our accents. We're also going to do our little belly look. Now if you choose to use acrylic yarn for this, I encourage you to do that. The pattern will go for any size yarn, but just make sure that you use the correct hook for the size yarn that you're using. So let's get started. So to begin, we're going to place a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to chain 11. Continue on until you have 11. At that time, I'll also bring my camera closer to the work. After we've chained 11, we want to turn it over and you will see the back bumps of the chain. This is what we're going to be using. This will also help make the bottom tighter instead of just using one of these upper 
parts of the chain, which will actually cause the chain to spread open a little more, and the possibility of stuffing coming out. So we're going to go into the second loop. So we don't count this one here. This is one and two. We're going to pick up that second back loop, or as some people call it, the back hump. Now after you place your first one in, let's place our stitch marker in, because when you skip this first chain here, it can confuse you at the end of the row thinking that it's actually a stitch when it's not. In the same chain, add one more single crochet. Single crochet in each back loop down, we will be placing one per back loop for a total of eight single single crochets. Keep going and I will meet you here at the very last of the row. Be sure to count to make sure that you've placed in eight single uh, single crochets. In this very last chain, we're going to place in three. Now I'm going to show you a little secret because we have the knot here at the end. So I'm going to place two in that last loop. Then I'm going to bring that loop to the back a little bit and take my yarn and go over the top of that. And we're going to go right here. So see how the knot is in the back, I'm going to bring the yarn over the top of that and that will hide that knot into the back. So we have three in that last loop. So we're going down this side here, we're going to place in ten single crochets. So go ahead and do that. When we get down to the end of the row, I'll meet you there. So at the beginning of every row, we're, we're going to take out our stitch marker and then replace it after we do the first single crochet. Into the stitch that we took our stitch marker out, we're going to place three single crochets. So here's our first one. Replace your stitch marker. Now I'm not going to remind you of this the whole time, but you'll, you'll witness me doing this. So there's one in that first stitch two and three. In the next stitch, two single crochet. Coming down this side here, we're going to place in nine single crochets. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you when we start on the curve again. In our next stitch, two single crochet, three single crochet in the next, two single crochet, Come all the way down, we're going to do eight singles, and in the very last stitch, we'll do two single crochets, and I'll meet you there. So, to start this next row, we're going to place two single crochets into the first stitch, and we're going to continue with two in each stitch for a total of five. So here's one, two, three, four, and here's number five. Now we're going to go down 
nine stitches here and I'll meet you there. So in the next six stitches we're going to place two single crochet per stitch for those six stitches. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you there. As I say meet you there, remember to please pause your video. To complete this row we're going to do 10 singles and in the last stitch two single crochet. We're going to do three single crochets. So here's one, in the next stitch one, and in the next stitch one. In the next stitch we're going to place two single crochet we're going to do three singles two in the next stitch Twelve single crochet and I'll meet you there. Two single crochet in the next stitch. Three single single crochets. Two single crochet in the next stitch, three singles, and then two. One, two, three, two in the next stitch, Okay. Let me double check my instructions to make sure I'm right. So let's stop right there. So we're good. So after we've gotten that far, we're going to do 13 and then the very last stitch, two single crochet. Go ahead and do that and we'll start our row five. So our next row is just going to be plain single crochets. So you want to count 49 single crochets in this row and then I'll meet you there. So one per stitch, 49. Our little bottom's getting bigger. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to row six. So we're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch here. Remember to place your stitch marker. Two singles. One, two. Now technically when you have two in one stitch it's called an increase. So we're going to repeat this sequence right here for a total of four times. So increase and two singles. So here we have one, This is two, there's three, we're going to do it one more time. Mm 
and two. Okay, so we're going to come down this side a total of 12 stitches. So I've completed my 12 stitches. Now we're going to repeat what we did at the other end. So two single crochet in the first stitch and then two singles, one and one. Okay, and we're going to repeat that four times as well and then 12 stitches down and then two stitches an increase in the very last stitch so our repeat four times 12 and 2 and I'll meet you there the total count for all of these stitches is 58 for this row that we just completed we're now going to start working up on the sides so I'm going to show you how to um, make it so that you can see the chain as well let me give you a little example here you see how you can see the little chain stitch here so that's what we're going to do we're going to make it so we can see this chain and that'll help separate and give like a 90 degree bottom that we need all right so before we move on I would like for you to enlarge the loop take my stitch marker out now from behind so I'm, I'm going to come through the next stitch okay see the hook came in from behind place that loop on the hook tighten it up some and then pull it through okay now you're gonna have to fiddle because you want your yarn under your work okay so that's going to make it a little snug all right let's place our stitch marker back in it so that way you know where it's at okay and then chain one the chain does not count as a stitch. So what we're going to be doing for this row is we're going to be doing the back post single crochet. But what I like to do is not go around the post. I like to go up here at the top. So I'm right underneath, not around the post, right here underneath the chains. Where they have that thinner smaller space that's where we're going to go so we're going to come from behind go around okay you see how it's separating it has that real small amount there we're going to bring the yarn through and complete a single crochet My yarn's getting tangled up on the yarn holder. Okay, so to do the next stitch, we're going to go through from the back, cross the front to the back, pick up the yarn and pull it through and through. Make your loops even, so you will have to adjust your tension on this. Yarn over and through both, and that completes the second single crochet for the back loop and you can already start to see the chain start to appear once you get the rhythm of it the hang of it it'll go quickly it seems slow right now because it's it's a it might be a new stitch for you but I know you can do this okay so here we've completed this stitch now let's move on to the next one so come in from the back, go over the stitch, go to the back, pull the yarn through. Here it's in the front. We want it in the back. Adjust that loop so it's not too tight. And then pull it through. You see our chain stitch here. 
So go all the way around till you come to this stitch here, okay? And remember, we chained one, so we're not going to count that. But you should have 58 back post single crochets at the end of this row. Alright, so continue on and I'll meet you there. Alright, I've gone all the way around and I want to recount to make sure that I have 58 stitches before I start our spiral round, which would be this first stitch right here. So double check your stitch count and then we'll move, I'll show you how to move on and then we'll start working up the side of our little bunny pillow. Okay, so in my stitch count I got 57, so I need to add one right here, which is going to be a little tight because of that stitch we created. So here I got my 58 stitch. Okay, so here's our first stitch. Let's go ahead and place that in there. And up our stitch marker. Now if you notice it's starting to go up. And this is exactly what we wanted it to do. And that's the nice thing about this back post stitch. If it's in a longer stitch it looks really nice but you all can also use it to create a 90 degree angle that we need and also look at the bottom size of our pillow. It's going to be nice and fluffy. Be great for the kids. Lay your head on. Be even great for a travel pillow. So what we're going to do now is we're going to single crochet around. Just regular single crochet. So we have 58 single crochet. And I will place on the, the screen how many rows we're going to do. So we will count, this is our first row here, how many rows up we're going to do. So according to my instructions, we need 15 rows. So we have, this is row one. We're going to do 15 rows up. Now, now's the time you can add stripes, you can add a design, whatever you choose to do. This is just a basic pattern to get you to make the shape of our little bunny pillow. So go ahead and do your 15 and I'll meet you after 15 rows of 58 stitches per row. Please pause your video. I don't know if I'm going to have enough pink and it in, in the filming of this, it's the middle of the night for me. So I'm going to be adding purple in the middle. I did one, two rows, so I'm going to add purple. I'm going to do that for a number of rows. And then when I stop, I'm going to stop just before I get to the top of this here so that the purple will end in here somewhere. So probably do about 10 rows. I want to make sure that I have enough of the pink because I wanted the whole thing to be pink. But sometimes you can't always get what you want. <laughs> so if you plan to change colors like I'm going to, what you want to do is you draw up a loop, bring the color you're going to uh, change in the front here we have a little tail place it about three inches down and pull that through both of the loops on your hook okay and then you want to tighten in this case the pink one and the, pur the purple one that I have and then for the next stitch you go through and go have your tails go over the hook and the yarn will help lock those in 
so that you can start. Now I'm going to do this probably for about four or five stitches where I go over the tails and that'll help keep it from coming out. So I'm going to be using the purple for approximately 10 rows and then I'll convert back to the pink but the little white piece that goes in the front will cover the majority of the purple. It'll still look good. If you want to place, like I suggested, stripes in there of the 15 rows, have maybe two on the top, two on the bottom, and then the 11 rows you can play with color and stripes and whatever else you want to do in there. All right, so like I said, I'll see you after we do 15 rows of 58 stitches. Well, here we go. 15 rows. It's about the size of my hand. This is going to make a nice soft pillow. I love this Bernat blanket. I folded in the bottom so that you could see it better on the camera angle. Now, like I said, it's the middle of the night for me. I wanted to get this video done and get it out. This, imagine all this is pink. I thought I'd, I'd have enough, but I didn't want to chance it because I wanted the upper half to be pink because the front was going to have the white that's going to cover most of this purple. So you notice also too that I um, change the colors was right here in the center so that the that white disc color or half circle would cover the change of color rows. All right, so. Here's my stitch marker down here. We're going to go straight up here. Now since I have this folded in half, I want to come to where I'm one stitch before the center. So single crochet up to one stitch before that center. And this is going to be our new starting point. Okay, so if we want to also verify that, it doesn't have to be exact, but here's the center row. We're going to come up, and I have like one or two stitches. So we're going to do a decrease here. Now since this is blanket yarn, I don't do the invisible decrease. I just go ahead and do a regular um, double crochet or single crochet two together. So here's, here's how I do it. We pull up for single crochet. Don't not... Uh, yarn over to finish the, the stitch just come right into the next one and this takes care of both stitches on one stitch what it means by one stitch is the chain is usually what you count so these two are now under one chain that makes it so you just have the one stitch so we're going to continue for 27 single crochets and you should be at the center over here, I had some snacks. <laughs> On the other side, where we'll do another double crochet and then 27 back to the beginning. So before we move on, let me show you. I'm going to place replace my stitch marker. I did that decrease right here. So I want to replace my stitch marker. Okay, so 27, decrease. 27 and I'll meet you right here So for row 24 We're going to do six single Crochets or six. Yeah six single single crochets and one decrease You'll repeat that eight times in total for this row. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then decrease. Okay, repeat this sequence a total of eight times. This is one. Continue around. At the end of the row, you should have 
48 stitches. For row 25 and 26, we're just going to single crochet all the way around for both those rows. Continue on, and I'll meet you there. So before we move on, what I'd like for you to do is find your center line and fold it down. Okay, and smooth everything out. Okay, and you can basically do a visual. Looks like center is about right here. If you're not sure, you can always take it and fold it. See, right here is center. And come on straight down. And what we're going to do is these two rows will give us enough so that it won't interfere with the placement of our eyes that we're going to be putting on. The row right here was where we did the decrease and then the first row single crochet. So the eyes are going to go in between those rows. So we're going to count over center right here. So we'll use this one as center. One, two, three. Well, let's go up one more right here. One, two, three. So we're going to place an eye right here. We'll come down one. Because we want it between the where we did the decrease and the single crochet. So where was that? One, one, two, three. So over here. Now don't put the safety backing on just yet. We want to count. Okay, so one, two, three. Over here. Okay, that looks like it's about center. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. If you want it out a little more, place it out a little more. You want it in a little closer. This is your face. You want to be happy with whatever you choose. I think I'm, I'll be happy with this right here because we're going to be placing a little nose right here. Or I can go over just one more. That would even be good. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. So I think that will be good. Now to place these backings on, lay the flat end against the back here and push all the way down. See how they went on the real easy like that. You just got this one right here. I got my thumbs right here. Got my fingers right here. There we go. They are on. Okay. So here I am, um, we want to go straight up here. So for our next row, we're going to count over five single crochets and then do one decrease. So here I have one done already, two, three, four, five, here's our decrease, repeat this sequence, this row, a total of eight times. We already did the first one, one, two, three, four, five, decrease. I'll see you at the end of the row. The next two rows, which will be row 28 and 29, is single crochet only. So single crochet two times around. We're almost done. We got six more rows to go. So for this next row, we're going to do four single crochets and one decrease. Do that all the way around. And if you want to get ahead of the game, the next row will be after that will be just single crochet. So this row to repeat 
is four single crochets and a decrease. Repeat that all the way around. The next row after that will be single crochet all the way around. I'll meet you there. This row will be three single crochets and a decrease. That's the repeat all the way around. Three single crochets and a decrease. Go ahead and do that and our next row will start stuffing. So before we start stuffing, you want to take your loop on your hook and make it longer. And if you have a locking stitch marker, you want to go ahead and lock that. Okay, and with the polyfill, go ahead and start stuffing it in there. Of course, pushing it down to the bottom as much as possible. And work your way up to the top till you have at least an inch from the top. We want to have uh, no polyfill interfering with our crocheting as we get final to the top. So to let you know, after we stuff it, we have three rows of stitching left, which it'll, it'll go really quick. So let's go ahead and stuff it firmly that you're comfortable with and I'll get back with you on showing you how to finish these last three rows. So please pause your video and start stuffing. So what do you think of our big boy so far? As you stuff it, make sure you try not to get ripples, like you can see some little stuffing here, but you know, as you use it, you're going to reshape it anyway. Now, on the bottom, you'll notice that it puckers out just a little bit. After you finish stuffing, you can push it up in there, and then over a period of time, it'll end up flat just like this. Okay, so, and when we stuff it, you want it to be soft enough so that it's comfortable, but not not too hard and not too soft, but you want it to be the, the softness that you enjoy. Okay, so let me bring my camera closer and put this guy down, or let me just tell you what the next row is going to be. Let's see if I remember why right. we just did three. So the next row will be two single crochets and one decrease. If you want to jump ahead, I'll tell you right now, the row after that will be one single crochet, one decrease. Those are the repetition repeats around. So the row we'll do right now is two single crochets, one decrease, then one single crochet, one decrease on that next row. Okay, your hole will get really small. But before we end up closing it and closing it up, we want to keep stuffing in also after each row. Remember I told you about an inch, so you see how I have, I don't know if, I, if, if the light will show it to you. There we go. See how I have about an inch from the top, and it's in there. Okay. So as, we, as the hole gets smaller, we can still have room to stuff it here. And, and, and that's what we want to do. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you in a few minutes. So please pause your video. Okay, I think you can see this. <laughs> this is how big the hole is. We have one more row to go. So my suggestion is to stuff it as best you can, not overstuff it, because the very last row is going to be kind of hard to, to stuff any more in. So go ahead and stuff it, make it around the sides, make sure everything's smooth, and then go ahead, the last row will be decrease, decrease, decrease all the way around. Okay, 
So if you leave your stitch marker in, I believe there's 14 stitches here. So you'll do seven decreases. After you do that, don't cut your yarn. I'm going to show you how to make it tight and close up the gap all the way. So let's start stuffing it first, and then do your decreases. So here's what mine looks like before I start the decreases. I filled it up. Remember to push the stuffing out of the way so you don't pull the stuffing through as you create your decreasing stitches. So here's the whole size after I did the decreases. If you feel you need a little bit more stuffing, go ahead and stuff it. Leave yourself a tail about 12 inches long. Go ahead and, and cut it and put the end onto your tapestry needle. So what we're going to do with our tapestry needle, our stitching is going to be going this way because we're right-handed. If you're left-handed, then obviously it's going to go the opposite direction. So the same direction that your stitching was going, you want to pick up just the top front loop of the next stitch. And we're going to do that to each stitch all the way around. When we get to the end, we're going to pull it tight and that'll make it look like it's inside the magic ring. See how it's starting to close up already? We haven't even pulled it tight yet. Okay, so I went all the way around. See, so I'm going to pull this and it closed it right up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my end off and weave the ends in and make the tail disappear on the inside of our bunny. And then the next thing we're going to do is the little front half circle here. So to start making our uh, little half circle in the front, we're going to start off with a magic circle. And I always like to take the tail out of the center. Okay. So we're going to place five half double crochets into the center of our magic circle. So to do a half double crochet, you got your finger on your loop, yarn over, take the hoop or the hook and go through the center of the loop. And draw up a loop by pulling the yarn from behind. So yarn over through all three loops on the hook. Basically what this is doing is making a taller single crochet. So we got one. We're going to do this a total of five times. There's two. Now sometimes with blanket yarn you need to play with the tension a little bit to make sure that you have enough yarn otherwise your stitches will come out at different heights. So we have two, there's three, four, and one more. Okay. So when we pull our tail, we don't want to pull it so tight that it closes. We just want to pull it to bring it snug. We want to make it so that it'll, the two ends will lay flat. So just set it down. Okay. Let's chain one and turn our work. Now so that we don't have a lot of these lines showing. See how they have, if you did the top two of the V, you'd have this line here. We're going to go and drop down below that. So each row is going to be a little bit different, but we're going to drop down below that. So you have your V up top here and you have this one 
that's the back of the stitch we're going to do two half double crochets in this stitch in our next stitch two half double crochets in the next stitch one half double crochet That'll be our center top. And in the next two stitches, two half double crochets in each stitch. Sometimes it's hard to see when you got that chain stitch there too. Okay, so we're going to chain one and turn. Two half double crochet in the first stitch. All right, looks like all of these, okay. So we got two, 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 one, two, two, two. Okay, so two in the first stitch, two in the next stitch. No, I'm wrong. <laughs> don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, listen to me now. Okay, so we got two. We're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch. And one in the next. The next one we'll do two in that one stitch. Okay. I guess you just listen to me do a blooper. So it makes it interesting sometimes, doesn't it? And now my yarn wants to get tangled up on all my extension cords that I have down below. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Okay, so we're going to do one half double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so two in the next stitch. Two half double crochets. And then two half double crochets in the last stitch. Okay, so this is what we have so far as our half of a circle. Chain one, turn your work. Now like we did before, when we do any stitching, we're going to go below. There's the V on the top and that little bar right there. We're going to go below that. So two half doubles in the first stitch. Okay, now here's our repeat. We're going to do one, one, two. And we're going to repeat that four times. Okay, so the one, one, two, so the two will be the very last stitch when we get over here. So one, one, two, repeat that four times, and at the end you'll chain one. So go ahead and do that. Remember to go below this loop, and I'll meet you there. I have to tell you this, I started to pull the yarn from the center of my blanket yarn as usual and it turned into yarn barf so made quite a mess <laughs> alrighty now this row we're gonna have quite a few stitches on it so I'm gonna go with you on this so in the first stitch we're gonna do two half double crochets okay we're gonna do a repeat two single half double crochets and increase half double crochet.
So here's one, two, and here's our increase, one, two. So we're going to repeat that again, one, one, and then our increase, so two in the same stitch. Now you see where the yarn manufacturer put this in here. So whichever side I choose to sew it on, um, you can always push it through or hide it. Okay. So let's see, I did my two. Okay, now we're going to do four single half double crochets. So there's one, two, three, and four. You notice how that went over the center top right there. Okay, so we're going to do a backwards repeat. We're going to start with the increase half double crochet. So two in this first stitch. And then two singles or one yeah, two singles. Here's one half double crochet and a second half double crochet. And we're going to repeat that. An increase. Okay. Now here here's here's my yarn barf. I thought I had enough, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, even on camera, loves to do that. So here we're going to do, okay, we did the increase. So here's one and one. Okay. And then two half double crochets in the last stitch. Let me see where I messed up because somewhere I have two stitches left. But that's what it's supposed to be. You start off with two half double crochets, a single, a single, two half double crochets, a single, a single, two half double crochets. Now when I say a single, they're all half double crochets in this. And then, oh, here's where I messed up. I put two in one stitch. Okay, so that was supposed to be four singles. And then we do our reverse. Increase half double crochets, single, single, increase, single, single. And then the last stitch will be two half double crochets. Okay, so I got to go back and fix this because I placed two in the wrong spot. All right, so go ahead and do that. And then uh, we'll be ready for one more row. All right, so I got it fixed. <laughs> I think it was that knot that messed me up. Okay, so at the end of the row, chain one, we're going to turn our work. And here, this will be the last row of our half circle. Okay, so in this row will be all single crochets. Everything here was half double. Now we're going to be doing single crochets. Okay, so we're going to start off with, remember to go below that line right there. You notice how it eliminates the lines for every row. It just makes it look flat. You see that? Okay, so go below those lines. We're going to do five single, single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then two single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so let's repeat that again. Five single crochet. Okay, so one, two, three, four. 
Okay, five. And then the next stitch you get two. One and two. Okay, and then we're going to reverse it. So we're going to start off with two single crochet and then five, two, and five. Okay, I'll meet you at the end of the row. So before we finish this off, we want to leave a long tail, maybe about 20 or 30 inches. We're going to use this to sew it down. So just pull it through. And then we're going to be putting our uh, tapestry needle on the end. So with the single crochet, the good side, the, the right side looking at us, we're going to take the center here and line it up between the two eyes. So yeah, that looks like about right. And it's just above that chain stitch row down here at the bottom. And then we're just going to take our tapestry needle and, and go through each stitch to hold it down in place. Okay, so I already have my needle on. I'm only going to pick up the stitch and then I'm going to come up through the top part of the chain of the stitch. We can go straight down and then underneath you want to go at an angle and then come up in the next stitch. Alright, so go ahead and do that and then you also do the same thing as you come along the bottom here. So now we're going to start making the rabbit ears. So let's place a slip knot on our hook and we're going to chain 13. One, two, three, continue on until you have 13 chains. In the fourth chain, so here we have one, two, three, four, we're going to place a double crochet. I'm using the back loops. Remember, like I commented before, it kind of makes it so it looks more solid. So we're going to continue down with our double crochet. Till we get to the stitch before the last stitch. So we should have eight double crochets. Oh, I guess I forgot to show you in case you don't know how to do a double crochet. Yarn over. You want to find that center loop on, on the back of that chain. Pull up a loop. You got three. Remember the half double crochet we go through all three but for the double crochet you only go through two yarn over and then go through two again. Okay, so we're going to continue on until we get not to the last one but the one before last. Alright, so do that and I'll meet you there. Now in this last chain we're going to place six double crochets. So find that center loop. Sometimes it gets kind of hidden because it is the first there we go. So I'm going to place three on this side and then like we did before I'm going to go on to the other side of this loop here. So here's two and three. So you notice as we do the other side we're actually picking up the chain part. 
So we're going to go through here, work on this side of the slip knot. So here's one, all in that same stitch, two, and three. Okay, and then we'll do nine all the way down to the end, and I'll meet you there. Okay, I know we have that chain one or chain three right here. What we can do is we can add one more double crochet. If you choose not to, um, we're going to be sewing an inner ear on top of it, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, do not cut this yarn. Just enlarge the loop. Okay, so this is what the ear will look like. Okay, now let's get the white color, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to chain 13, and in the fourth chain, we're going to do a double crochet, go down, add eight more double crochets. When you get to the last one, six double crochet in that end one. And then on the other side, we're going to do 10 double crochets. So that way we'd have this balance out right here. So go ahead and do the white one. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to finish it off and join the white and the pink together. So when you come to the end of the white one, just leave a short tail and go ahead and cut that. And let's finish it off. Okay, so the tails are going to go on to the inside. If you have these long ones, you can cut them down a little. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and join them up. So place the white one on top. Well, let's see. I think it'll look better. Yeah, if we have the right side stitches sti sticking out. So here we got the right side and the right side. So with our hook here, go ahead and tighten it up. Every stitch around let's make sure we get it in the right stitch or they'll be off a little we're going to place a single crochet. So sing, uh, through the top stitch, through the bottom stitch, like so. Single crochet. So do that all the way around. All the way around. Once you get to the end here, I'll meet you there. So this is what you should have. It will curl a little at the top. That's what we're looking for. So we want to leave a long enough tail so that we can sew this on to the top of the bunny. All right, go ahead and make a second one. So what we're going to do is we want to fold our little bunny ears in half. And then stitch them together. Make sure all your tails are stuffed on the inside. So fold them in half like this. We'll take a couple of stitches on it. Okay, so that'll be like this when they're sitting on top of the bunny. So do that to the other one. And then we'll place it on top of our bunny's head. 
So we want the bunny ears to, to be close together, but we don't want them to be like that unless you want them to be that way. I'm going to have mine where they are separated just by a stitch or two so that they're still touching. But like I said, if you want to join them like that, give them a little personality, that's up to you. But you'll notice that my bunny back there has the little tiny gap. Okay, so the placement of our bunny ears will go right here on the center top where our closing circle is at. And we're going to just use a whip stitch to hold them down in place. So go ahead and sew those on. And after we do that, we'll add our final uh, finishing touches. Now to make them stand center, standing up, I'm going to bring, oops, sorry about the, I'm going to bring the needle up through the back here, and then I'm just going to put a little join together this way under this so you really can't see it right since the plushie is so huge <laughs> and my GoPro only has so much um, stand the next thing we're going to do is the nose and the mouth and the whiskers and of course we'll add our little accent of a bow so if you look closely you can see what I did is I centered it I counted over and I found this point I counted over and found this point and I found the center point and all I did was go with my needle and thread or yarn and just filled in the space for here I created I put pulled the needle out here dropped it in down there and just went over it to create the little look of a curve. For the whiskers, I came up, went across, came up, and went down. And then if you have your end pieces over here, you can tie a square knot to finish them off. And this will finish up our bunny face. So I'm using this uh, worsted weight yarn. I'm going to have it doubled, maybe tripled or quadrupled <laughs> for the nose part. And then um, I'll use the black. But let's go ahead and do our bunny nose. I'm going to go ahead and put, and uh, w with the size of this, it's four ply. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, double it up and start on the triangle. So... I'm going to show this to you upside down. The ears are down here. So this is the bottom direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get three straight pins. And I'm going to decide where I want to place them. So right now it's just kind of a guesstimate. Okay, but once you decide where you want to place your pins to find out how you're going to do your nose, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to leave a little bit of yarn out so I can tie it in. Now you see how sometimes the stuffing will come out with you? I don't, I don't really like that, but it's okay. And then I'm going to go down to where the triangle is. I'm going to come over here to the other one so I can get rid of all of the straight pins. Of course, you got more stuffing coming with it. Okay. And then we're just going to fill it in. So come over just a little bit. And go back down into that same hole in the center come over here might have to it's hard with this um, blanket yarn it's it's not like regular worsted weight yarn 
and then down into that hole again. Okay, and then down into that center hole again. Now, of course, you're going to find some openings, but we'll fix that. Okay, so you can see what we have here. And um, you see how we have open space. So we want to go ahead and fill it in to fill in those opening spaces. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you how to create the mouth. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add for the mouth. So here we have our center. And we want to kind of come across one, two, three, four stitches. Probably less than that. We'll do three stitches. Come over here. Let's see. One, two, three. And we want our little loops to come down. So I would come down probably just enough to make it look like a smile. Right here. Now, unfortunately, I had to stop up here. So I'm going to go back to the center and take that pin out. I'm going to come across. To this one right here and then of course it's going to loop around and we're going to go back to the center and pick up right here so I'm going to take these two end ones out and if you're using multiples make sure you fix them too. And so we have a nice curvature here. Now in order to make it so that that curvature stays like that, I'm going to come up here we want to make sure that this one has a nice curvature also. I know somewhere I lost the tension in my yarn here. There we go. Okay, so I come up here. I'm going to go over these stitches and go back down into that same hole. And I'm going to come over a stitch. Now, of course, it's not always going to turn out 100% correct. But it does give the nice little curve that we need to have the little um, smile look right. Now I got a few loose strands. Let's see where you can find which one it is. There we go. Let's bring this one right here. Yeah, that'll hold it down. Okay, and our in and out is right here, so we want to work the needle to come out of that hole right there. Making sure you don't pull all that stitching all the way through. So we have a nice little smile right here. So we're going to take this end right here and place a square knot into it. I know it sounds kind of crazy. I used to think so too. Okay. 
cut off the excess and you take your crochet hook and you go in between one of the stitches and come up out of that same hole you went into pull the yarn through and bury all of that okay so we have our nice little mouth completed got one little touch and I'm gonna add a bow up top here just out of yarn nothing special and then we're finished and there with the lights shining on our little bunny pillow is complete here I put a little bow up top here's the facial features oops I forgot one more thing that's the whiskers so we're just going to add some black lines here and then we will be 100% complete. Alrighty, now we are done. So cute. What do you think of our little plushy bunny? So let me show you the size difference between this is a worsted weight yarn uh, chunky basically a size 5 with a 4.5 hook this is blanket yarn with a 8 millimeter hook looks nice huh so this will be good for a travel pillow or even laying on in bed at night and this you can put on your shelf either way I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please come again where I'll have another crochet video for you. So until next time, bye-bye.